Disco Elysium épisode 5. Let's fucking go. Décrocher le cadavre. Ok, donc je peux aller décrocher le cadavre. Promising raised pupil returns. So it was. My unpromising raised pupil returned. 
harbor and you you're so noble measure head this about but while I am gone someone must stand guard on the bridge that someone needs to be you both of you babe see that they stay here the whole time Perfection. Are you cops or what? Have you ever thought that maybe things should go to shit? I'm Katya, by the way. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. <laughs> yeah, Jean Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. Look at you! RCM Renter Cops! Guarding that bridge like Evrod's lapdogs! Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale! Putain, j'ai les deux les travailles sur le dos là. Corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. And what you had to do was to become a union man for all to see. Don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront international capital. Something your race also. To serve is noble. It takes discipline. Of course you are, clever show young man. The failure of communism to challenge the world order is the core of your race fate. All around you, the fruits of its defeat. Individualism, rock and roll music, sexually transmitted disease, above all, Rampant multinational finance still reigning in large. Tell me where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from? Degenerate youth culture? Rock and roll music? it does you are a degenerate individualist and a rock and roll rebel a pawn of international finance just like the rest of your ham <laughs> oui, il a une dent contre les gens bonos, lui. i am not surprised you enjoy it so much 
This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. <laughs> I can see that. The Simonies are the South Island race. Haplogroup A4A. The rightful masters of the Insulindian archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. We are the future. That is all you need to know. I am a descendant. No. Yes. This could have made him more open to discussing the race enigma with you. corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pinewood branch. It's gently laid on one side. Mr. Mesurehead has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. Yes. One, investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are the RCM's four-phase murder scene processing manual. The fuck are they on about? Cop's gonna cut his shit up! No, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain, from autopsy to cleanup to social work, everything. An honor and a burden attached to your rank once you've proven yourself able, usually after five to eight years of field work. Mine is lieutenant detective. You are. Your station would not have assigned you on this case if you weren't. Now. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. What you do know is, at 18.9 kilometers, the dormant shield volcano, Corpus Windy, is the... Unfortunately, no. They are better than nothing. Tell you what, I perform the anatomical side of things while you will take notes. That's right. You knew it because you inspected your ledger. The lieutenant is relieved you know the protocol. Yeah, we got this. We're smart. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... That's you. 
The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings, just lies there. The next box says KK57 0803.0815. KK equals Kim Kitsuragi. 57 equals Precinct 57, followed by his date 0803 and time of arrival 0815 on the scene. He's indexed the case after himself, not you. That's because he doesn't want to bring up the messy question of your initials. And what would that mean, the alphanumeric? HDB 41 0803. Help me out with the time of day, anyway. 10.15. It's understated. Good. Let's go with that. The lieutenant is quite surprised you've managed to come up with an adequate case number. We've heard the nom de guerre. Lely. It's better than nothing. Write it down. What's next? Uh, date of any. Hmm. Roughly 50. Dry 40. The damage is so extensive, it's better to err on the young side. He nods. Mondial. Fair to olive skin, from the Isola of Mwindi. This is as vague as it gets. You might as well say whitish the pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither mondial nor anything other <laughs> fucky, fucky. male <laughs> big skin out sex Nor does he look male, with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. We're still going with March 4th, 51. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non-applicable. Ten. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. HDB 41 0803.1015 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. None, at least not after the initial examination. Interfering with the body's position or wounds post mortem. A silent nod. The lieutenant places his gloved hand on the corpse's chest, as if your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform, then... We should start the post-mortem. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy paper tries to answer why. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. See, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color, white. 
The disappointment is palpable. The rest of the clothes have been removed post-mortem by scavengers in order to get to the victim's ceramic armor. Officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them for yourself, as you ought to, you have deserved them more than anyone else. More than... More than... Patience. After the autopsy, before the body is taken away, there will be a window of opportunity. After the lieutenant has gone to sleep, I hope this has helped you, my liege. Note, the boot has a hidden serial number on it. It's E50.100.1000. Which the assistant detective inexplicably reported to me as X5415 something. Why was that assistant detective? It was merely a jest. Horseplay. A total psychopath is wrong. Yes, and now this happened. I am perplexed. Officer, please write down the right serial number. Vitius Arati, this pleases Kuno. Tattoos. Try not to bring the incident up anymore. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a triggered mini. The deceit has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, 3 meters. There is a buckle on the other end. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature below freezing. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking mad! Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest. Consistent with predation. Ligature mark. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the bell so we can get to the ligature mark. You've got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. The hanged man lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Always good to think ahead. Now... We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, with as much precision as you can. See, my pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread. Right, the knot is the weak spot. The chain cutters fit in there. Steady now. Like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come uh, de chance. After some deliberation, 
You sink the cutters into the knot, tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. Sweat forming on the brow. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia. Now, <laughs> let's get out of the sea! I fucking knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for, ever since the autopsy began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. The dead man's penis is average sized, congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. We have a real museum here. Battles, wars. Last item, hands. The hand is surprisingly heavy to lift, filled with decay liquids. Feels as though it could explode if squeezed harder. You're suddenly repulsed, so- Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. What would that be? The dead man looks, too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. I think that may well be the moral of every story, officer. Good. Muscoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hyoid bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed. The lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it, gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone... Fuck you right off! Down. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Respiratory system. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen, hemorrhaging present in mucose of the lips and mouth. No scream, no sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there, sickly sweet air unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again. It's hard, 
Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and hemorrhaging present in mucus. Hepatobiliary, N.A. Ah, are you a hepatobiliary expert? Hepato means liver, and biliary, the gallbladder and bile ducts. Nothing in your alcohol-soaked memory directs to having forensic... Neither am I. That's it. Same for toxicology and serology. And unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there? Reservoirs? No, but do they take obscure trivia and odd tidbits? Like a toxicology screening? Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Gastrointestinal. This will do. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. What's next on the list? Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fills. Leave a fourth one too. Be thorough if you want maximum results. Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Agreed. Next injury. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man, beneath the description of injury to right next oh so we inflicted them okay so there's a spin stabilized munition from a kill a 990 muzzle loader lodged in his lungs i don't think we should mention that better not to muddy the waters see these pigs are fucking corrupt don't you fuck them if you love him so much? Now, injuries. Nothing. Just in case. The corpse lay slouched to the side, oblivious to its surroundings. Be All right. Bite marks. Be thorough if you want maximum results. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Think for a moment. This time, don't rush. Blessure mortelle. Blessure mortelle. Blessure non mortelle.
That's it. We have established cause of death. It's not much, and it leaves much to be questioned. But it's a start. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. Well, we established probable cause of death. Some would say that's the goal of an autopsy. We also requested a toxicological screening. That was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. I would not hold my breath. We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg for processing. He's thinking, did I miss something? You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Perception, 3%. There's always something. Shoot, Looney Rooney! Into the what? In the past. I'm a joke. Look at. There is nothing funny. You're a killer. Go ahead, Kobo. I'm a joke. There is. Go ahead, Koba. What do you mean? Ask me more questions. Because you're a copper Rooney. Coming right up, copper Rooney Rooney. It love did me in, brother Kobo. It was love all along. Sure, Lobo. Looking at my face. Motionless. Looking into my eye. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Ha! The clown lips on the corpse appear to smile. Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest, and it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. Because you have. Because you're a copper Rooney, your lost copper dopo. Love did me in, brother Kobo. Sure, lo looking at my face, motionless. You're a lying sack of sh. Sure, Lobo, looking at my face. I am all you have. Do I remember? A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. No, not quite. There you go. Look at that bright kid. We're birds of a feather, you and I. Feeling nausea, vomiting, tenderness or pain around the liver area, tiny red light. Do I run a child born with Muller's? Sure I do. You come back later, Coppo. Amuse your... I thought we decided to leave it to press. Damn it. This is turning. In okay. So you can sneak out of your room, maybe, after he's gone to sleep. You run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs, the genitals in his breeches continue. Can't get enough of that dick. Do you think we missed something? Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. And hey, wasn't there a giant ice bear sarcophagus below that building? Now, detective, I've rarely been disappointed by the size of a giant ice bear fridge. But I think we should still take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. Let's move. With every hour, whatever we are looking for in the deceased will become. Okay, donc faut qu'on le mette dans un frigo tout moisi là. You need to act decisively. It's Kuno. Use Kuno words.
Watch out, Kuno. He's trying to crawl up your ass. Kuno knows which kip Kuno meant. Kuno knows all the kips. Kuno's dad's a kip expert. Says kip every day. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. Except kips. Try to crawl out of Kuno's ass now. Yeah? The fuck did you want anyway? You got your fuck bag down. The fuck about it? Fuck you talk. He says you're stupid, Kuno. They want to make you stupid again. Where's the fucking shit? Has Kuno been to some kind of school? Probably a school for children with behavioral difficulties. Watch out, Kuno. He's trying to relate to you. Kuno doesn't give a shit about your handicap. Get a wheelchair or something. Kuno doesn't care. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the... Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. Fuck you. He says you're stupid, Kuno. The buck-toothed gremlin. Let's go of... Your test. Get lost. Kuno doesn't fuck... Okay, lui me dira plus rien. Both cables are unplugged. Somewhere in the... Somewhere a machine... The bear's eyes are still glowing red. Watching over all the ice cream wrappers. It's certainly an eccentric choice. But it is capacious and cold enough to... Your visual confirms. You could fit two more bodies in the ice bear fridge. Shall we go and get the body then? I'll take the head. You take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. The body is heavier than you expected and stinkier. It takes half an hour to get it down to the basement. Then, ten more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. Beautiful. A dead body in an ice bear fridge. This is some of the best body's work I've ever... You have created an ice bear sarcophagus. Talk of the ice bear sarcophagus must not leave this room. If I were an artist, this would certainly not be my vision. I would be much, much more conservative in my work. He's right. His work would be much more formal. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. Shoot, loony Rooney. I like it a lot, brother. This really is your finest hour. You're a genius. A regular Coppolangelo. Into the... In the past. I'm a joke. And a kick. Go ahead, Kobo. I'm a joke. There is... And a kick. Go ahead, Kobo. I'm a joke. There is nothing fu... And a kick. Go ahead, Kobo. What do you mean? It's the... Him. Go ahead. Ask me more questions, because you're a cop. Coming right up, copper Rooney Rooney. Because love did me in, brother Kobo. Sure, Lobo. Looking at my face. Something is on its way. Something hidden. Come back later, Coppo. I thought we decided to leave it. Damn it. This is turning. Okay, so you can sneak out of your room, maybe. After he's gone asleep. 
Oral compromis. It'll come to you sooner or later. At least he's safe here until then. If you think so, officer, I'm not going to object. I need a little help for carrying him to the holding pen of my kinema. I'll take it from there. There go those beautiful enamel boots. You will never own the full set now. Oh well, in another lifetime. Continue working here. The locals, the case, or attend to your own business. Empathie, moins deux clairs obscurs. Diplôme d'art authentique. Marv, you fuck a bitch! Ah Il va ramener le cadavre. Il fallait que je fasse quoi dans l'appartement d'Evrat Ouvrir la porte de l'appartement pour Evrat. Derrière la serre dans la cour pour intimider l'occupant. Faites ce que vous avez à faire en échange. Tout seul derrière la serre dans la cour ah ouais là je crois just an ordinary war nothing to see here Must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The Royal Lion, Guillaume's kitten, 
This knocker will last a lifetime and then some. This must be the door Everard mentioned. You still need to get the key from Anyana first, but... A clé de mana. Récupérer la clé de la porte du fouinard auprès de Manana. Il est où Qui Manana Mec dans le bar je crois non Bye bye, gendarme. Good, Manana. I've got nothing to say to you. C'est Elizabeth. Why are you? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Even though she has excellent control over herself. Something moves behind her eyes, in the way she stands, in her face. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. I suggest... Even though she has excellent... No. Talk... Looks like the circus left him, but the clowns are still here. A witness? You ain't got shit. That's just Koptakti status. Next, he's gonna tell you one of us already roll on the others. Well, let's hear it then. He's not alarmed by the sudden appearance of a witness, but he is surprised. This goes without saying, but nonetheless, don't give out his name. So, some moral intern crony. What'd he tell you? I bet he had a dead hooker situation. If he came to Martinez. That means absolutely nothing to me. What is this fella's problem? Sorry, we didn't... It's you assholes that feel the need to go around like a fucking brass band. The Hardy Boys are dead silent. Yeah, it's like they put cowbells on you before they send you to the streets. What's with the cowbells, policemen? They're avoiding having to answer this question. We were drinking, weren't we, guys? I hit the bottle hard. I was drunk as fuck. Arab guy? <laughs> Boss, I think he's trying to save me and Theo. Well, yeah. What is confusing you? You yes, enough of Charles Villadruan from So much bluster to hide the fact that they're uncomfortable with you having this info. Again, just get the dead guy's autograph, since you're his biggest fan. <laughs> Good one, Titus. Nothing. Your investigation here is done. You should go. Yes. Run home, lonely rent a cop. Real law officials are done with you. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. Yes? What is it? God damn it, you leave her alone. Keep Can I actually help you with something? Yes, of course. Preposterous. Again? I can't. 
all hallowed. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. They're friends. What? Ah, plus de batterie dans la souris. The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. Horse need more vodka? Of course, vodka. Now that makes a very, very special borscht indeed. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder keg. He smiles, nodding vigorously, then pours half a bottle of vodka into the... He smiles and nods enthusiastically and chattering away in his language. La con de speed, alcool. A savoir, il est où ma nana en vrai? Pas lui. Si on prend mes... Je sais pas il est où bordel
payphone hangs mute. Ah, c'est lui. You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. Right, you talk to the boss eye to eye, like men of the plain. The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? What a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men. He's not lying about not doing it himself. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? Oh, say no more. I got you. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. Bull or weasel? What you're looking for is a basement door behind the grid. The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly... None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? An informateur, bordel. I'm more of a philosophical dock worker. I like to talk about. He means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't. Un putain d'informateur. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everhart. Los Ardis? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. We're negotiating. Aye. Hi, hi. <rire> salaire ou de retraite Genre de salaire ou de retraite euh... This stuff, they already covered. It's not enough. Not enough to get ahead. More about keeping us in our place. All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board. So they This seditious talk sounds like communism. Just so we're on the same page. Communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grad. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've made it. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. I guess you kind of get to be the village chief. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties, watches out for his own. By heavens, why would he not be corrupt? We live in a harsh and disordered world, see? The old man is corrupt for our benefit, and we know it. Appreciate it even. He is, personally, not too lavish. He is reasonably lavish, sure. That's his prerogative. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. Besides, there are no known corrupt systems in the world anyway. This man has political theory, and it has not failed him today. Sure thing. This was great. You feel mentally reinvigorated. Okay, donc j'ai les clés.
This must be the royal lion, Guillaume's kitten. This knocker will last a lifetime and then some. Bon, je peux le faire, bordel. Salut à Kimura. Frappez doucement. Collez votre oreille contre la porte. Utilisez la clé de Manana. Collez votre oreille contre la porte. Le leather upholstery est worn et rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. Le revêtement en cuir est usé, rugueux contre votre mâchoire. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Utilisez la clé. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. There might be important information in the apartment. I mean, there might. Master investigator, you just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places, can you? Qu'est-ce que cela veut dire en tant que policier J'ai le devoir de tout passer au pen fin. Que soit clair, je ne suis pas un voyeur. Attaboy, the world's secrets were made for you. They wait patiently for you. Je crois qu'il a pris la fuite en vrai. Un livre intitulé Le monde caché des faces m'est ouvert. Vous sentez presque la chaleur du soleil rouge sur le drapeau. La personne qui vit ici admire les héros musclés. Bonde. The suzerainty. This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Revachol got its flag. The flag accepts your honorable salute with quiet dignity. Une chemise. Plus un en logique. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. Une rangée de tasses ouvertes sur l'étagère. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. There's something disdainful in the way the curves and lines of the bodies were drawn. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. Un truc typique de connard, alors ils peuvent penser ce qu'ils veulent, c'est un monde libre. This person is unhappy. Yes, 
your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. The owner of this collection could be dumping his trash in the Whirling's container. C'est lui le tueur en vrai. An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues récupérer sa tasse. Et sa tasse que j'ai récupérée dans les ordures. Who knows? Could be. But this clothes in the trash lead doesn't really seem like it's going anywhere. You could ask Everard who this person is. Magnesium. Une petite valise pleine de vêtements. Les invités logent ici. C'est tout Pierre Evart, que vous avez déverrouillé la porte, parlez à Titus pour faire preuve d'autorité aux yeux de sa bande. Looks like the circus left him, but the clowns are still here. Establish authority. Yes. Authority. Feverish thoughts race through your mind. Stop shitting your pants. You don't need to know, all right? We can... The law handled it, all right? Yeah, aren't you listening? It's done. Finito. For God's sake, stop shouting! Stop crashing into people in my establishment! Stop provoking those oafs! They're not going to give you anything, can't you see? I can't have a police interrogation in here. People are trying to eat. What is your... Easy, babes. What is this? I can't have a slap fight in my bar. It's embarrassing. Take it outside. 
will. Everyone can see you picked some wrong options. Next time you have to come up with better things to say. Okay. On va utiliser les bonnes options là. Mr. Dubois, every worker. Okay. Why the hell not? Now, how can I help you today? I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the oven. He's trying to figure out if you're lying. Just as I thought. Culturally antiquated mug collection. What a weasel. Pissing on Everart's Rainbow Coalition. He was testing you. And you succeeded. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is going to start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is going to be good. Racist mugs in the trash and in the apartment. You guys are just light years ahead of me. I have so much confidence in the ability of your organization. I'm relieved you're doing this and leaving me to do what I do best, helping people, with the power of politics. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't cross paths like that. All I want is for you to succeed in your investigation. I would... Oddly, it seems to be true. Believe me, Harry, he's a nobody. It's your basement variety nobody. Can't imagine him being connected to a high-caliber case like this. But he does live nearby. Maybe it's a pedantic weasel. Fascists are known to be neat freaks. I feel like a real detective right now, Harry. Am I getting this right? Of course, of course, Harry. I'm not a real police officer. You are. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild Pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. 
Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines Group. A security contractor? Can you imagine that? He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Saramaritsa. You name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. Yes, I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Harry, what you need to realize is, we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. There's a militant wing inside the union, a group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood making sure everything runs smoothly. That sounds a bit like organized crime. They're like you. Idealistic people who want to make sure that bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again, that sounds like organized crime. Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, Socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. If he's just boasting, then it sure doesn't feel like that to you. He places a lot of faith in that lawyer girl. Perhaps this is a tactical error? Anyway. How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. You said it, Harry. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. Of course. You're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. Tribunal? That sounds serious, Harry. We union men should be shitting ourselves. I wish you hadn't told me that. I'm gonna lose sleep over this. 
Let's change the subject. He's clearly happy about the tribunal. What do I really think about the tribunal? You're trying to climb to second base with old Everard before you've even courted him properly. He wants you to do more things for him before. Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Wait, the girl by the whirly, who was keeping an eye on you, is he talking about her? I did that, didn't I? She thinks of herself as a guerrilla fighter. These middle-class kids and the books they read are crazy, Harry. I think she would rather be an insurgent than a lawyer. I hope it's a phase. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them. Exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Harry, they're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. He's betting on them being useless to you. But of course, it's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. Also, Harry, here's five real. Good boy, a real team player. Now, do you have any more questions? Was it a good talk? I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin Ames. And of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But it's like I can't completely trust you, yet. Yes, Harry, it's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man. A man of the left. So you have to be a social democrat. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. What does your heart tell you about your lost gun? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. I'm glad you asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth center in Martinez. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed 
I just need two more signatures to get this mission off. Yes, yes, the little cul-de-sac on the coast where all the men have drowned in either the sea or the bottle. A gloomy place doesn't have that union attitude. You're already pretty deep into this. What's a little more? No one can see you here in Martinez. They are just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth center designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. Is he absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the street? Am I? Harry, these people, Martinez is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. We're gonna build a youth center there. The value of their properties goes up and kids have a place to play in. I'm looking out for these people, not pulling the rug from under them, Harry. I'm looking out for all of Martinez, not just the harbor. He means it. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here. You need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I heard Once you have the signatures, mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then we can talk about your gun. What? Oh, how could I forget your little side project? Well done, Harry. Well done. Don't even tell me what it was. But good job. I love it when workers take the initiative like this. Most certainly, Harry. Nothing brightens my day like brainstorming these things with you. By all means, Harry. No, you didn't. <laughs> I know the mailman, Harry. I know everyone, and just like I know, you'll get it done. By all means, Harry. What's on your mind? Ok, donc faut que j'aille déposer les lettres. Allez, let's go, cabane du pêcheur.
Entrée interdite. Quelqu'un a gibouillé une étoile à l'envers dessus. I won't even consider signing till I know she's on board. Waves are beginning to die down. Why does she care about the waves so much? What is it with waves and fishermen? We need to be out there with them, fishing, making a living. So I asked them to accommodate me. But until that happens, I can try to assist you the best I can. Where are you? Hmm. This says by signing, I agree to living with construction noise. What a nice idea. Wouldn't have thought that... She sounds incredulous about the niceness of the idea. Evrar and the Union have nice plans for anything. I thought they only cared about themselves. Well, I guess Union members... And those members have a vote when electing the head of the local chapter. If you say so. Probably better that way. I mean, who likes constructing? You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period. There is no loophole. The simple truth is, the current residents are going to lose their street access, and for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. Once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. Well, you could trick Everard. Get some random people to sign the document. By the time the union boss finds out, your business here will be already concluded. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to be awfully close to the already existing building.
Tequila Sunset. What's it about? Uh, I'll let my hand address. Maybe you've heard. I used to be a very... All right. Hey, Abs. Hey, Abs. Abs. <laughs> the man mumbles incoherently. Hey. Il a trouvé deux, deux fake signateurs. Wake up. Wake up. I'll be damned. Uh, well, uh, that's what we have, Rosemary. Sure, I can fucking help. You need a signature. I got you a... Not exactly an expert forgery. Don't call Abigail. Would have signed something more like... Don't call Elliot. Hey, guys. We're heroes. That fucking time, man. I've done my duty. The incapacitated drunk lay there snoring. Anything else this merry band of adventurers can do for you? Or do you need to go and mail that serious-looking document of yours? I think I saw a mailbox near the plaza. Serrer l'enveloppe dans la boîte aux lettres sur place. Elle est où Elle est là, je crois, non Perception. C'est pas aller où la boîte aux lettres Tequila, of course. Drink first, story later. Interesting. Ah, this is what they use to keep the working men going. Hey, Spiral Boy, you gonna share that? Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. 
trois sous long, bordel. It did. With my trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer, but now dreams are worn thin. Much like my tracksuit. One day I left on my evening run. As His eyes are your eyes. So I removed the key ring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. Wet, okay? It was raining really hard. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate. Which... Ouch, indeed. Reality was looking rather grim just then, so I made my way across the yard. I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Though people are naturally wary. Heavy is the head that wears. Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could, but when I reached my office, I... Anyway, so, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? This would explain a lot. I always believed it wasn't my fault that I ended up homeless on the beach with these two bums. God bless them, though. I'd be alone without them. Anyway, that was all the story one bottle gets you. Almost empty, this one. Good fucking question, Tequila. I used to own... Now I... You of all people should empathize with this. Perhaps this lost jacket is something you could help with? My agency. Now. The Boom Boom Room. Our concept was combining high art with the lowest forms of marketing. The color red, breasts, and oil painting. I convinced my partners to re- I was financing a group of- Sounds intriguing. If it sounds like it makes no sense, that's because it doesn't. Euh, associer peinture et nichon pour concevoir des publicités n'est pas du grand art. I know. It was fucking awesome. What? Pretty nice, huh? This might be one of the last of its kind. Good God. It's nearly impossible to describe how dirty this texture is. It's like rubbing two j randomized trials have also found licra tea and then there's the smell but you don't even want to think about that wow you're lucky he never lets me feel it that's because your paws are fucking filthy rosie my fellow members of the hey tequila shut the fuck up rose i thought he was a cool cop a gurgling sound and yeah you're already acquainted with app tequila it's a verified Say, you're a detective, right? Maybe you can help old Doom spiral out. 
If I knew where I lost it, don't you think I'd have it? Somewhere north of here, that's for sure. You could ask around, see if anyone's seen it. I'm all ears, Kira. I do. But as you can see, my f then I can't keep on. Actual art degree. Diplôme d'art authentique. Réflexion assimilée. In a way, yes, you are treasure hunting. Most officers from Precinct 41 do what is called the Jamrock Shuffle, cracking open containers. Most of them are from Jamrock or Coal City, the poorest parts of Revachol, that also overlap with the network of royal catacombs called Le Royale, just beneath the streets. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Oh, I had gloves. I found them when Lemmy and I were playing hide and seek in an empty house where no one lives. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. I hid them. The twins were going to take them. That's why. Oh, they're in my sandcastle, behind- Yes, I am. Little Lily, do you know- That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. Yes, they don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. They look the same. <laughs> Sometimes they look identical. <laughs> it's a growl! Wasn't Gar, the cafeteria manager, trying to repair a piece of taxidermy? I don't know. Sure! Just go and get it. Alright. You just need to grab it from the ceiling and go. It's Lammy. He's my friend. Lamby is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One. Lammy usually doesn't like strangers, but you're also fuzzy, like Lammy. Bye. Waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Remarkable. <laughs> that one already lost everything else, and now his jacket too. It's a good thing too that he has an actual police officer looking for it. Good old doom spiral. Upper management to the core. That's odd. Is she actually impressed?
How sweet of you. It really is. I check around the abandoned fish market on the boardwalk. Drunks are inexplicably drawn to markets. Might be why they have such trouble staying in business. A phenomenon that the spectral hand theory of the market fails to account for. If one of them lost something, that's as good a place to start looking as any. Get the drink on. It would be unimaginable for a human female to have sex with a man without alcohol, as the master of ceremonies to guide them. Alcohol? Connect. I'm not sure I'm following you. <laughs> That's a good impression. You really cracked me up, officer. Now, how can I help you? She doesn't even understand. You asked her out. to pay for under it. You hear the tone. The machine calling. Still calling. This feels wrong. End of tone. Someone picks up. Here? Is that you up here? Sister's grandson. He used to visit me as a lad. Fine young man. But who are you then? A salesman of some sort? Modern goods are rubbish, and I can't afford them anyhow. It's a shame what you did. To hell with the police. <laughs> Her voice is drowned in white noise. S calling. Still calling. Someone. Hello, Gerard speaking. Hello, Gerard. Technically speaking, you're electricity. No, what you are is a surprise. Get his wife on the phone. Do you think you are talking to me like that? Very funny, asshole. What phone hack disconnect tone? Calling, calling, calling. Still, still. Stop calling. I'll get you your money, all right? I just need till tonight. Let me work. I, um... Hey! Disconnect tone. C'est quoi ce téléphone?
There's some tear. An em Qui eux, bordel Et Michael notice the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. You, officer, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez. I was just telling my son about this building. Not many people appreciate the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. Oh yes, so Mikael. They had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows. Very important. Mikael, <laughs> say hi to the officer. Mikael, see what to do, Fesson. But I assume you're not here for giant... Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. Aha! What not a lot of people know is this Regardez le bâtiment qui vous surplombe, je n'avais jamais entendu parler de Feld Electric. Which now sells ah bon. in cartridges mostly. Was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics. Regardez le bâtiment qui vous surplombe. It looks old and weathered with seagulls picking. That's not surprising. They started out as a midway Oui, mais pas du tout pour l'enquête lui. Was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve, or should I say, they were developing an ace up their sleeve? I'm mixing my metaphors here. It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a uh, tape. Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution, which is a feat of engineering, even today's giant. He assumes something like a combat stance. Indeed. What? The revolution! Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly all of this was built by Feld, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middleman effect, Feld built this side of town for R&D. Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A wheel? Yes, to lure in their star engineers. Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers... He means that the boys got shot by the communists. The boys were bourgeois. Tape computers. They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. 
What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created... A short-lived legislative foundation. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to River Shoal. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. Buckle up. Ten years ago, I did a little... Freelancing, I guess you could say. Okay. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womti Domti Dom Center in Vredefort, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ockham. Wait, did he just say Womti Domti? What the hell is a Womti Domti Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy Yost? The Womti Domti Dom Center for Contemporary Art. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ackerman, chose to... <laughs> in fact, I'm not. The Womti Domti Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredefort and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. <clears throat> but perhaps I should return to the tape computers. Made of black film and folding tape structures. Even one would be very useful. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to the... Yes, the official name of the prototype. Some sources report it as the felt playback experience. But those are incorrect. Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. But of course, what else? Sure, what's on your mind? But of course, what else? I do have some money, yes, but that's not what's really important here. No, I mean, come on, you need the money. If it's not a thing, he can give you some. Of course, detective. I wouldn't have assumed anything else. Matter of fact, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the Vespertine Department of Justice has published a rather interesting paper on the criminal profiling in former socialists. If not, then you definitely shit. If not for tips and tricks, then just for theoretical curiosity. Anyway, that's just a little something that sprang... Forget it. They don't sell those kind of books at crime, romance, and biographies. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikhail here to pick your brain. A pick your brain? If anything, this was rather one-sided. You see, a once bright mural. La clôture bloque le passage. A cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officer. 
His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements. Is that the police? Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. It's all right. I'm just busy. What's this about? Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken. And we can... The 881 is a raised motorway that separates Martinez from Jamrock. The labyrinth of streets underneath it makes it difficult to pass. Not... You broke the water lock with a motor carriage. There was a billboard in the carriage. Not a vehicle, said Samaran Vada. Why? Sure, but you said the water lock is fixed now. So we can go back. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. Which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for him. Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reed, and I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators, or scientists, in our present case. It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defences work, much less how they evolved, without studying a live specimen. A ghost insect, he said? These people are looking for a ghost. That is precisely what we're not. We are zoological specialists. Look, I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them. Even simply catching a glimpse of the insulindian phasmid. Very little, I'm sorry to say. No, not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. I know it's real. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. 
That's what brought us to Martin A's specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location, but I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it... He means asexual reproduction. The females of the species don't need to mate to produce viable eggs. This makes it easier for a species with a small population to survive. Yes, the Insulindian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. Well, they may not look... Yes. Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can at least... Chasseur d'insectes, bordel. The net isn't a perfect locust. Chasseur de Pokémon avant l'heure. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over. A meat-eating stick insect. Does it pretend to be the reeds? Thank you for your opinion. They'll work. The traps do seem to be dead. Yes. What? And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It and leave the traps. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out. You won't let Lena down. Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting. Oh. She's seen it. Yes, that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the phasmid were to starve? He's dead set on this. Hmm, I could go for some trap setting. I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, persistence. There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula, by the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and a month. You should check at least one of those before returning to this. Bring it to me at once. Just He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll play. That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. It's made of musk of research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sighting. <laughs> Thank you for your help. Gary and I will stop. Finally, you're being sensible. I'll start packing. If it's more cryptid, re but what if the information is vital? On. What about his eager to leave friend Gary there? Talk to him too, perhaps. I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is it's not child's play. Just because I have to trade through the mud every so often. Real. I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. My methods are the same as those of other scientists. 
I'll see. No, as I. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Something for later. This close call. Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts, like the one that brought us here to look for the Fazmin. He's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't. Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration, not real research, and certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot, and both the field and basement archives can be dangerous. No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered. Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society, of two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. Yes, the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. In fact, it is 0.05%. Ever more ma He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Yes? All right. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with special... We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it. A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialist would find rather dull. Willow people? Not at all. They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals. As they seem to have evolved directly from trees. They're very, very thin. Almost flat, in fact. You probably have. Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paints. It was a bright lavender colour. After waiting in hiding for hours, I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. And you can't be elegant in the field. Now, I know it sounds like we were snacking on funny mushrooms, but I did see motion and colour. Mine is not a confirmed sighting of a cryptid, however. Much goes into verifying these things, and my account comes short of a few standards. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. I see you've been talking about cryptids with Lena. The kind green ape is one of her favorites. A warm wave passes him. Of course, the kind green ape is her favorite. You think? We traveled to South Safra to look for it once. 
Gary and I got stuck in a rainstorm, though. And had to spend most of our time there in a little village. The search was fabulously unsuccessful. But the people... What? Sounds... Really? Okay. They're a nascent culture. I just didn't feel comfortable. And... Formerly the well. most dangerous believe oh, yeah. the most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous ruminant. Yes. The dread moose subsists entirely on flesh. It has even been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. Human remains have been found deep in the forest, torn apart, then trampled into the mulch by large hooves. Infer from that just like an ordinary ardent moose. You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful. A moose that looks like any other moose. What's going on here? He's kidding, right? You're right, too. The body, in fact, we may be close to capturing a live specimen. Modern genetic methods may prove... Cr That's impressive, I guess. But have you seen it with your own eyes? Of course you haven't. I haven't had a chance to travel to Coco North. No, and I likely never will. The Samuskill Desert region has been embroiled in a small... I fear this mindless barbarism may have wiped out the elusive creature entirely. Sightings of towering luminosities. Yes, sightings of mirages are constant. A mirage is a constant phenomenon. It remains unclear what this has got to do with you seeing it, as he was inquiring before. Oh, everyone knows about that one. Thanks to Professor Mijanu being the talk of the town for a time. Although, probably because her life ended as a result of her work in Gutler, no one remembers her contributions to the search for the Nong Ok. A flightless cursor owl found in the Seminine Isles. Its long legs permit the Nong Ok to run faster than any other avian. Perhaps any other animal. When well, it's not hunting its prey in this manner, the Ok hangs from tree branches, like a bat, waiting to dive on hapless prey below on the jungle floor. Mijanu liked extreme animals, you see. One of the few figures of the academic establishment I respect. Really a shame she disappeared. Oh, decades ago, in the 30s. I didn't know her personally, of course. No offense, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field re- Me? I'm not a people person. By all means. Oui, il m'a pas spécialement aidé à avancer dans l'enquête. J'ai gagné ma 6p. I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Degenerates? This man respects authority too much. To see the truth inscribed upon thine own visage. Pretend thou art the paragon of virtue. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacol. He pronounces Revacol with a hard K, unlike other people. I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vesper oh, way. C'est peut-être lui le raciste, là. The stupid way. It's a secret right, a very fringe nationalist handshake. Eh, c'est lui, c'est lui qui a, bu, qui a buté le cadavre en vrai là, le cadavre. C'est lui qui a buté le pendu. My mug? Why would you think that?
How do you mean? Forgive me, officer, but we've only just met. He is trying to avoid lying to you outright, in case you really have been to the apartment. Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry. Uh, you're not going to find me, are you? Oh god, 250? How am I gonna pay that? Okay, I'll work harder. I'll pay it off. I pr this is a considerable expense to him. One month's wage, most likely. And I'll never do it again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. I know a guy who works with the trash collection services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Bohemians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? Officer, please, let me explain. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Then I came out to clean up the rags because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor. An infant could see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. There's something going on here. You should observe it more closely after this topic is concluded. I hope I could help your investigation. It hmm. Does this mean you are in his apartment, admiring his colonial mug collection. Perhaps it would be interesting to tell him. I told you everything I know. He's not feeling too comfortable in his own skin. Uncomfortable shifting around doesn't make... No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. After all this time with Morel, he must have an opinion on cryptids. This could lead to a good one. Oh, yes. The burning rhino. Morel doubts he's real, but I'm a rhinoceros that looks ordinary during the day but burns brightly by night. Well, at least the males do. They have special ducts just above their shoulder blades that secrete a combustible fluid. When the rhino is just beginning to light itself, it... But how is this combustible fluid lit? The rhino starts running very fast to build heat, then stops, raises its head, and sparks fly from its neck setting its back ablaze. Revacol used to be a flaming rhino once, a long time ago. The flames are not just for decoration. They are an integral part of the beast's mate. During the burning rhino's mating season, herds of male rhinos are... Local peasants call it the passion ring. They fear the rhinos as perhaps they should. It's clear the burning rhino is dear to him on many levels, some even spiritual. 
Sure do, officer. In my home. Yes. When I was going to... How did you know? Mr. Clare unlocked my apartment? So you work for Everard Clare? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. What could it be about? I probably talked too loud. In the whirling. About some theories I had. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. Has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. Is he? He's looking comfortable enough. Maybe it was just bees. Sounded like beads, but what kind of beads might a man like Gary be hiding beneath his clothes? Why would I do that, officer? But, officer, I'm not wearing any women's clothes. My mug? I may have had a similar looking mug in the past. Okay, okay, you're not going to find me. Whew. I don't know. What did you do? G Nothing. All right. Possible que ça soit lui qui ait buté le mec. Ok. Disco Elysium, épisode terminé. A plus tard pour la suite. Ciao, ciao.